I became an RA because I was on community council last year and I really enjoyed it and I wanted to take on a larger leadership role within my residence hall. I've been involved on campus since I was a freshman and I knew that becoming an RA would not only help me develop leadership skills for the future but it would also give me the chance to motivate incoming freshmen to get involved on campus so that they can have a good college experience as much as I have. I decided to become an RA because I had a really good RA my first year in college. I really liked the entire atmosphere of resident services and I'm a people person as you can tell. I'm very talkative, I'm very mannerism-y too, so people get along with me well. Making sure I'm finishing my assignments and doing stuff for class. Because if you wait until when you're on duty, that's a very bad thing to do. Patience is definitely on that list. Um, having an open mind is very important, and organization is very important. I know myself, I'm a procrastinator, and so having this job has forced me to get a little more organized, which is good. Definitely have to be patient with residents and with other staff members. You have to be a team player because there's absolutely no way to do this job by yourself. You have to be able to compromise because things aren't always going to go the way you plan. Programs won't always have as many people as you planned um, to have come to them. Your class schedule, your extracurricular schedule won't always work out the way you plan. So you just have to be very flexible. You have to be very responsible and you have to have good time management and you have to be very friendly. Um, you also, you can't be a pushover, <laughs> and there's some times where you have to be strict and you have to, you know, kind of go by the book, and so you have to be able to, you know, turn off kind of like the friendly RA and kind of be the mean RA at times, but it's, it helps you in the end, so just be an overall good role model, and, you know, kind of do the right things and be a good example for your residents so that they kind of know, you know, hey, this is how you're supposed to act around the community and around campus and stuff like that. You have to be social. Um, you're dealing with a lot of residents, a lot of new people, so if you're introverted, you know, you do have people who come and talk to you and try and break your shell, but you, you have to be willing to be open to new things and new concepts. This is a difficult one because um, this year I was also doing student teaching in a high school for 20 hours a week, and um, it was difficult, but I just had to play in a block different amounts of time where I was doing my homework this time, I was working on RA stuff this time, and stick to that schedule. That's probably one of the hardest things to do. Uh, I try to make a calendar, try to prioritize my things and make sure that I'm setting due dates because it can get very difficult with a lot of different things going on. Uh, so just making sure that you always remember that you're a student first because if you don't have a high enough GPA you can't remain an RA. So making sure that you finish your assignments, your papers, before you do anything in regards to the job. Just making sure that you just balance everything well. You definitely have to be organized, and you have to be on top of your game all the time. You can't, when you're leaving the building, like, you're an RA, whether you're on duty or off duty, you're an RA at all times. My favorite program was last year, we had a blacklight party in Hamilton Hall. It was a really different idea, and it went really well, and a lot of people came to it. I would say my favorite program this year was we did, me and another RA did like a voter program where we told them how to register to vote, what the issues were this past November, and also what was going to be going on next year for the presidential election. I think the best program that my staff put on was the Haunted Trail on Springwood Lane. Uh, we had about 350 people come out. They all donated uh, canned goods that we donated to the Wright State Food Pantry. So we had basically about 700 canned goods donated to them. My favorite program um, that we did the past two years was called Sex and Candy. It was a STD awareness program that we did that was really fun and interactive and kind of like a game. Um, it got residents really involved and they really enjoyed it. The zoo program, I believe it was very um, fun and educational for the residents that have attended. It's a very large program um, with you know, animals being brought in from Columbus Zoo. Well, of course I do my three rounds a night, and then um, I have my door open, and I just 
answer phone calls. So what I do on evenings when I'm on duty is I usually have a lot of homework or studying to do, so I like to leave my door open so residents can walk by and see that I'm available and see that I'm working on schoolwork. Or if I don't have any schoolwork, I do like movie nights or something small, just in case if I get a call it doesn't really matter if I leave, but still being involved with residents. On duty now, uh, we do our mail, we deliver mail, we deliver packages, and then whether you're primary or secondary, if you're primary you have a phone, you have an emergency phone, and if you're secondary you back up the primary obviously. You'll have those nights where you have two, three, four calls, and you might have them you know, at 10 p.m. right after you turn on the phone, or you, know, you might have them at 3 in the morning when you're trying to sleep and you have a big test the next day, so it just depends, but that's usually what a duty night consists of. Hands down, the toughest part is dealing with disrespectful people. That could be other staff members, that could be residents, that could just be when you go to buy something for a program um, and people, you know, the tax exempt. Just dealing with disrespectful people um, can really make your job really challenging. Like incident reports and so insecurity reports and caring conversations. It's important, but it's just difficult. Toughest part of the job is definitely policy violations. Nobody really wants to be the bad guy, but still, you have to do your job. And in the end, we're all here to get an education. I'm just the guy that knows most of the rules, who has to kind of police them. One of the hardest parts of this job, I would say, is um, keeping up with time management. I would say the toughest part of the job is just never getting away from it. Um, you live in a hall with your residents. They get used to your schedule, so they pretty much know when you're there, they know when you're not there. When you get a call at 4 in the morning, like I said earlier, you know, when you're, when you're sleeping and you're really tired and you have to be up early for a class or you have to be up early for a test, um, and you get a call at 4 or 5 in the morning about someone being locked out, locked out of the rooms, um, it's frustrating and obviously, you know, part of the job. But Because you meet so many new people and you build those relationships, um, it, it gets hard to distinguish between a friend and a coworker sometimes, and so that can be difficult when you have to hold your coworker accountable for certain things that the job does require. What's the address to this room, to my particular room, to the right state? Um, so I made a big envelope, which I've seen other RAs do, I've made a big envelope and put it on the floor hanging up that has, it's a mock envelope that has the address written out where stuff is on campus or whether or not someone's allowed to do something in the dorms. Do I like being an RA? I think is the one I get asked the most. Like, well, of course I like being an RA, but this, of course there's times where I don't. <laughs> well, the phone number for maintenance, which drives me nuts because it's on the wall in my hallway. And I've told people that about a million times and they will still come and ask me for it. Usually where is stuff? How much do I get paid? And I say no. And, you know, is it hard, or is it really a job, or, you know, is it time-consuming, stuff like that, I mean. I had a resident once ask me if he could ride his mattress down the stairs, and obviously I said no. Somebody called the duty phone one time and asked if they could buy eye drops from me, if I had a medical kit, and they could buy eye drops because their eyes were itchy. I know that... Even though you have to make a lot of tough decisions as a leader on campus, you have to always remember that one of the most important things is being able to listen and that being able to take tough criticism is also a very important part. Listening to your fellow staff members and also listening to your residents can help uh, improve you to be an RA. Um, I've definitely become a lot more um, aware of how people grew up and like different, different like backgrounds and um, I've learned a lot of responsibility and being organized. Learn a lot about yourself. Learn a lot about your 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 work ethic, your, your work style, um, your leadership, you know, potential and style. Um, I think for myself I learned that I needed to get organized, which I, I feel like I've done a better job of. Expect madness on days when you think it's going to be um, calm. I've learned to be a lot more patient. Uh, and patience is very essential in, in this position and so uh, I've learned to be really patient especially with people who you know they don't it's not the way things go down isn't necessarily their fault you know and so you gotta be patient because you might have 
four or five residents who ask you the same exact question. And after the third one, you kind of get tired of hearing it, but it's their first time asking it. And so you got to be patient and realize, you know, kind of look at things from the other person's point of view. So I've learned to do that as well. I've also learned that hard work comes a long way. You know, you might bust your butt and not get recognized, but eventually you will be recognized. And so just just work hard and, and things will things will play out the way you want them to. How to work with other people. I'm typically used to doing things where the only person that's affected by negative choices is myself. And being in the shop, if something doesn't go right, it affects not only your residents, but it also affects the rest of your staff. In an apartment RA, you don't get to see your residents as often as you do when you're a uh, residence hall RA. Um, with that being said, you might like that, you might not. For me, I found that I like both. You know, back when I first started, I really enjoyed seeing my residents every day, and I really enjoyed, you know, almost like being in their face every day. You know, but but they need that, especially when they're just starting out in college. Um, they need someone who's going to be there a lot to kind of guide them through and kind of show them what how to do things and what to do and and all that stuff. So you like the, almost like the baby steps when you're in college. Um, after that. But once you're in the residence halls, they, you know, they tend to be upperclassmen, they tend to be sophomores and, and juniors, and so they don't really need, you know, the, the RA to be there at all times, and so that's okay with me. I mean, I'm comfortable enough to where they come to me when they need something, and, you know, and, and I let them know, hey, we have a program, but I don't, I don't have everyday contact with them, which is a big difference compared to uh, when I was an RA for two years in the residence hall. To me, living at Fishbowl means that your every action is seen by everybody. If you come back and you're not, um, you're not quiet during quiet hours, people notice. Uh, based, like everything you do is on, is on display for everybody else. So it's just, it's hard to do anything that you, you know, like want to go out and drastically do something. You have to actually think through most actions, which has made me think a lot, a lot of like hard choices in life. Um, living in a fishbowl basically means that people's eyes are on you at all times, no matter pretty much where you're at, because you're always, in this job, thought of as a role model, and you need to obtain that no matter where you're at, even if it's just at, or if you decide to go out for fun with friends, you need to make sure that you're still being that role model, even though it's kind of your free time and let loose time, like you still, other, like residents can be wherever you're at, so just making sure that you keep up that good image and... Go Raiders! <laughs>